Welcome to Small Practice Support Information Session 5. In this Law Society recording, Neil Butler talks to Justin Purcell about exploiting new technology. I want to um, welcome um, Neil Butler here, who brings a great wealth of experience and client service. Uh, he's operated his own law firm for over 20 years, if you're not familiar with Neil already. Uh, he is a vice chair of the Law Society Conveyancing Task Force and a member of the uh, Law Society's Technology Committee. So I think we're in really good hands. And I'm really excited about the new emerging trends that he's going to tell us about today. I think everyone will, will learn something new from it today. So Neil, you're very welcome for our first uh, inaugural session from the Law Society. So delighted to be here. Thanks, Justin. Um, we'll kick on. I did make the point to him yesterday that it may be as much about existing tech just applied as opposed to new. So um, hello to everyone and uh, hopefully I can offer some value. So I'm just going to skip through uh, fairly quickly. Um, so see you hopefully. And uh, as Michael had, there we go. I want to hit it in three uh, categories, I suppose. The office and workstation to physical space, um, mobile or mobility working, and then some elements on productivity and software. And as you can see, I'm making a couple of assumptions. The first is that the smartphone is in your pocket or your bag, and copier, scanner is available to you as well. Um, and the reason for those hopefully will become a little bit more clear. In terms of questions during, uh, personally I'd prefer if they could wait, but we'll see how we go on time. Um, Starting with the physical, I suppose, tech can work for us, but we need to make sure that uh, uh, we're in charge. And by that, I mean the ergonomics are important. So some of you will know my belief in two screens and the productivity uplift it gives. Um, I'm absolutely a convert. Uh, earlier today, I was preparing a contract and uh, you know I had a PDF of the LPT and the BER and so on, I had it on the right-hand side screen. I was doing the contract conditions on the, the center screen. And, um, being able to list them and, and pull them back and forth. Uh, and as you'll see, being able to annotate the PDFs, um, it's, it's just terrific. Generally, I'd have my case management in the, on the, the, the screen in front of me and the email on the right hand side of me. Um, seating and screens and ergonomics generally are so important. Uh, Cost Ergonomics are a firm that operate in Dublin, the front tip outside Thurles. 25 years or more of expert knowledge developed, well worth a look on their website. Um, the riser you see is one I got, uh, I have to say, at the beginning of lockdown from uh, Amazon, delivered from the US, uh, as a side story. Interesting little tariff applied to that because of Mr. Trump. Anyway, um, it is a riser and uh, it's mechanical as opposed to electric. So I work um, by taking breaks standing and sitting and it has made a difference. Uh, I'm of an age now and I need to be careful. Uh, FlexiSpot is the one that I use. Costs have their own. Uh, again, well worth a look. So the recommendation is 30 minutes sitting, 5 minutes or 10 minutes standing and go again. Um, VoIP phones, a voice over internet protocol. Uh, I haven't paid rental on a line to the office here for 5-6 years, I suppose. And I was interested recently talking to a colleague who had still had 4 or 5 lines and paying a rental on them and paying broadband. So just to be aware, uh, you don't have to pay rent. The voice will uh, coattail, I suppose, on the broadband signal. Um, all you need to do is buy a, a VoIP uh, qualified phone, as it were. And the one on my desk, uh, no more than 35 euro, 40 euro. The one at reception, because of the extra little features, probably 70 euro. Um, my supplier is Goldfish. I have the logo there. Uh, Blueface are a very big outfit, and they're there as well. So. There are two uh, very worthwhile outfits, Goldfisher and Bray. And the other nice thing about it is that I only pay for what I use. So in terms of calls, I top up online once a week or whatever it is, and I only pay for what I use. So if I don't use it, as I did in lockdown, it doesn't affect me. Card payments, the last little hint down there. Uh, I think at this stage, most of us are doing it. Um, the Law Society has a recommended partner with a, a particular tariff for the profession. Personally, I like the sum up one because I can shove it in my inside jacket pocket. It works through Bluetooth on my iPhone. Uh, it'll print the receipts, it'll email the receipts, it'll give me logs, it'll do all I want. Um, and uh, it's, okay, 2.75%, I think. Probably could do better in the market, but it's the size and the portability I like. 
So there are the options. From the physical to the software. Digital dictation over there on the left-hand side. I don't have typing support in the office for, again, five or six years. Uh, I outsource it to um, a supplier in Dublin. And while there are a lot of small suppliers, uh, a lot of them don't do encryption. They don't do NDAs at the outset. Uh, the supplier I have does, and that's part of, that is the reason I went with them. So um, they supply an app, it's on my phone, and I can uh, literally dictate anywhere. Um, I have given them the templates in my notehead, say pleadings, uh, say convincing documents, and I can tell them which template to use, and they'll populate it. They use an online portal, so they give me an email to say the job is finished, and I can go online and edit online, download it, save it, index it. So I can do that from anywhere. Um, so you can see the little picture of the, the interface there. It's quite simple and intuitive. In the center, working anywhere. Um, the word programs, there, there, there are bread and butter, uh, Excel, uh, Outlook. So Microsoft Online for Business. Uh, the basic one, as you see, is four euro 20 per user per month. Um, you can go the middle ground, which gives you a few uh, bells and whistles, and certainly the apps are better. And uh, those apps you can use on up to five appliances. So I have mine on my office PC, my Mac at home, the laptop, the iPad, and the iPhone. So no excuse for me, really. Um, I personally went for a higher standard. I went for Enterprise 3 because it gives better encryption, better management of GDPR policies, better reportage for data privacy, uh, that kind of thing. That's up to about 20 per seat per month, I think. Um, but I just like the extra uh, reportage and um, uh, controls. On the right-hand side, remote office access. And a lot of talk about that, I suppose, over the last period. Um, I've been using Go to My PC since about 2009. Uh, it's from Citrix, an American company, uh, one of the prime movers in the networking space. Um, so high quality, encrypted, as I say. Um, I pay about 140 euro per year for the one license, but I can access my office PC from anywhere in the world on any device. Um, I do that as opposed to a VPN or anything uh, more expensive. And I appreciate I'm uh, talking to a, a small firm audience, not the enterprise uh, level audience, but this works for me. Uh, Log me in is from Citrix as well. Um, uh, different stable mate, uh, different features, so it's a personal preference. Splash Top is a third one. I don't know it, I have to say, because I've no reason to change from Go to My PC. Um, I can file share with Go to My PC, you know, uh, and I can screen share and different things. So it works very well for me. And before Zoom was heard of, I was using that. So. It has proven itself to me to be stable. There are the, the uh, work anywhere elements. Moving on then, um, the iPad. Yeah, I like my Apple pieces, uh, but really the iPad, uh, when it reached the 12.9 inch size and when the Apple Pencil uh, became a real tool. Now, as a, I would describe it as a real tool. So I, Love the note-taking apps. Apple themselves have the Apple Notes. We see it on our phones and we tap away, but uh, Apple Notes is capable of being used with Apple Pencil 2. So there are two versions of Apple Pencil. One is okay, two is the one to buy. Um, Note Shelf is a second app. Uh, I particularly like it because, um, as we'll see in the next slide, it has features that I just find add value. So I have this iPad, um, I can, Take it with me anywhere. I have it here in the office for doing client interviews. I write my attendances and my handwriting on the iPad, on white, yellow, lined, online, square, paper, whatever I want to choose by way of a template. I can share it into my uh, case management. I can email it. I can share it with others. I can add pictures to it. I can annotate it. Um, I can add voice files to it. So I can record an attendance and I can do notes at the same time. So in the case of doing wills and being certain, all that kind of thing, lends itself. Good Notes and Notability are two other very powerful um, apps of similar type, uh, handwriting and handwriting recognition. So Note Shelf is a strong engine too, um, mind you, it's challenge in my handwriting, to be able to convert the handwriting to type, which isn't so bad. The one thing I would say about using all of those, you can use in your iPad and if that's all you want to do, that's great. But storage and being able to use it across platforms is where the difference between using a paper pad and a digital note-taking pad 
is, uh, is found because for me to be able to come into the office, see a note I did on another device uh, without having to import it is terrific. Same on the laptop, same on, on the uh, phone, even the iPhone. So cloud storage is needed for that. And because they're Apple devices, I simply like to use the Apple software. So iCloud is my one of choice. Again, Apple's data privacy um, uh, articulation seems to be stronger than some of the others in the marketplace uh, and gives a bit of comfort. I've referenced two URLs, two websites. Um, Paperless Movement is the first one. That's a German guy, um, uh, Tom Reudel, uh, forgive my pronunciation, uh, goes by Tom Solid for some reason, but um, very interesting guy, has a good community there, a lot of good sharing and user stories, uh, well worth a look. Uh, subscription service again, if you want to join, but there's a lot of freebies. The second one is an Irish one, uh, Paperless Academy. Some of you may well know it. Jared Grok, Grok is a barrister and he's been fighting the paper battle for some years now. Did a very fine suite of um, uh, education pieces around digital notepads, note taking, uh, how to annotate PDFs, use them and so on. So again, you can buy what you want in there, have a look at his website, well worth a look. And he's, he's very approachable, very open and supportive. So it's a good resource. Staying with the iPad for a second, just reinforcing I use it for attendance notes. I've gone to seminars and I use the camera either on the phone or on the iPad to take a picture of the slide that's put up. I quickly import that into my note. It's all in one place. You know, we've all experienced, you take a picture of something and um, you forget that you have the picture on the, the photos roll, you have your paper note, oh, where did it, that go? You know, it's all fractured. I like the, the, the unity that this gives me. Client documents, PDF, Word, Excel, all available on the iPad. Uh, all can be exported back and forth and can be shared. The other thing, of course, is that it has the Irish Times, it has Amazon and Netflix. Uh, so when you do want your downtime, you can do that too. Um, Note, uh, Note Shelf is the one I referenced earlier. And I've just given you a little uh, screenshot of a piece from its own website. So it takes notes, but it will record audio, allow you to mark up PDFs, as you can see in the image there, very powerfully. And again, with the Apple Pencil, you have all that just like a highlighter. Add photos, draw perfect shapes. So my shaky hand, uh, I want to draw a circle, it's a pretty grim effort, but the uh, software will snap it to a perfectly round circle. So again, if you're drawing out something, um, uh, that's the way your mind works, it's, it's very useful. Covers and templates, so you can differentiate various notebooks, uh, you can add in pages. I've often gone back to an, a note series, it could be a lecture, and I want to add in a piece, and in the paper, uh, notepad, you'd be squeezing it in, double writing or whatever would be here, you just simply click plus, add a new page, and it inserts a page. You can bookmark them, you can search against them, and it OCRs your handwriting and recognizes it later, or it'll OCR and you can do a search. So it's really very powerful. For about, I think, for 39 or 49 euro uh, on the App Store, well worth a look. Okay, that's enough uh, postulating on that. Um, PDF, it is the go-to uh, modality for document management, I guess, um, in terms of, of uh, external documents. On the left is Power PDF from Kofax. It used to be Nuance. Uh, it's 99 pounds sterling. Um, well, well worth it. So what I find terrific about that, I've had it in the office on the PCs here for years, um, not only will it allow me annotate PDF, manage PDF, add pages, subtract pages, twist pages, rotate pages, it'll allow me convert a PDF to Word, allow me convert a PDF to Excel, um, or Word to PDF, or Excel to PDF. Think of a precedent, I shouldn't be saying it of course live here, but uh, from a colleague, or dare I say from the Lost Study Library, you can scan it as a PDF. This will allow you to take a paragraph and convert it into Word so you can work with it. Now, those of us who are a little bit more knowledgeable, perhaps, I can apply security so that that is prohibited. Um, but it's a very useful device if you do have an older document, as I had uh, only yesterday, um, pulled it out from the storage here, 2007, um, and uh, scanned the page, and then ran the conversion utility and was able to take what I wanted from it seamlessly in a couple of minutes. No retyping, don't forget I have no typists here, so anything that will support that is great. Um, that's Kofax on the left-hand side. Uh, PDF Expert is for the iPad, iPhone, 
the mobile device really. Uh, 38, 39 euro, something like that per year. And again, I've given you the URL down the end. Um, Kofax, for some reason, don't do a mobile version. Go figure. But um, both of those are better for me than Adobe. Adobe is quite resource hungry, I find, in terms of your PC. Um, it's also very expensive. Uh, I know they're doing a cloud subscription service now, but I just like what these guys do. Okay, uh, moving on then again. The next piece is task management. And um, I use Todoist, uh, and I use it with Pomodoro. I don't know if any of you know what Pomodoro is. Uh, have a look at Wiki. But uh, they reckon that you should work 25 minutes and take a break for five, do something different. And go back to the start, my desk riser. I'm trying to discipline myself. Sit 30 minutes, well, sit 25 minutes, stand uh, or do something different, and then stand for 25 minutes, and then reverse again. So I'm standing and sitting, circulation, bones, they're all being managed. Let me have a look, or let me run this quick video. It's a minute and a half or thereabouts. So I hope the sound and so on will run with it. Whoops, it won't. Let me click on the screen here. I thought I had on the click. Life can be chaotic. At any given moment, you probably have dozens of things on your mind. Trying to keep track of everything in your head is overwhelming. You don't know what to focus on first. But you don't have to remember everything. Let Todoist remember it all for you. Start getting tasks out of your head and onto your to-do list, no matter where you are or how much of a hurry you're in. Simply click or tap to create a task and use natural language to quickly add the details. Set a due date or a recurring due date, like every Monday, so you never forget a deadline again. Then organize your task into a project and add a priority level so you know what's important and what can wait. You can even share projects and delegate tasks to a family member, friend, or coworker. Once it's in Todoist, you can stop worrying about it until it's due. With all your tasks organized in one place and synchronized across all your devices, you'll be able to easily review the day or week ahead. Todoist is the only task manager that helps you set productivity goals and keep track of them with beautiful visualizations. Use the feedback to stay on track and make real progress towards your goals. At the end of the day, you can rest, relax, and recharge for tomorrow with the peace of mind of knowing that everything is 100% organized and accounted for. Join over 10 million people who rely on Todoist every day to feel more in control of their lives. Visit todoist.com to get started today. So as you can see, uh, the, one of the primary attractions for me was simply the natural language. So the, the similar interface on your phone, big red plus, uh, hit it and simply speak to the phone and it'll set up the thing. You're not drilling into what month is this, what day is it, do I want to do it tomorrow, what time you're scrolling down through the time uh, wheel and everything else. No, all gone. Um, it's just very intuitive and very well worthwhile. While I'm on it, for those of you who do use Apple, uh, there's um, uh, calendar app called Fantastical, which has a similar engine, natural language. And again, it will sync with Outlook and the other ones. So I use Fantastical on my Mac at home and on my iPad and my iPhone, but it'll sync with, with Outlook. So anything I put in Outlook here in the office, Fantastical will pick it up. But it's just so much easier to uh, do things and share things. Um, I find Outlook just that bit clunky. Anyway, um, that's uh, my Pomodoro with Todoist. The next one uh, is down to, let me get over there, yeah. As I said to um, Justin yesterday when we were running a, a quick run through, I'm not an artist by any manner of means. I've been known to sing a song, but I, I can't draw to save my life. Well, I did find this app, and I have to say over the last six or eight months, doing different projects, I started visualizing them a little bit, and I found it just very good. And what's nice about it is that I can start on the iPad again, or I can start on the iPhone, and it, it'll, be cross-platform it's it's in real um but what's also very good is that i've uh, say for for board management meetings and stuff i've been able to uh, put out stuff and export it to pdf and it prints in color and so on so i'm getting uh, slaps on the back in terms of how do you do that and so on it just seems to the visual is one of the best learning tools i think we all know that and particularly if sh sharing information on a project or a concept uh, it can be a very good way I'm at the moment uh, looking at redoing my website. It's five or six years since it was done. And this is how I'm going to map it out. So when I go to talk to the media people, um, they'll have a better understanding, I think, than my simple wordy description. 
which is a vision in my head. If I put it out on this, it's there. So my note is the software. Uh, and again, well worth a look. And I offer it for uh, those of you who want to um, uh, let out your inner artist. Um, okay. Passwords, uh, bane of our lives, but necessary. And uh, these are two password protectors. I use one password. Uh, I think it's very powerful. The concept is very simple. You set up one complex password to access this software. All the other passwords are stored within it. So all you have to do is remember the one, because one password can link up with your browser, be it Google Chrome or Safari or Firefox. There are extensions, as they call them, that you can put in. And one password will automatically fill in the Amazon password. It'll fill in the Law Society password. It'll fill in whichever one. So it's intelligent enough to recognize where you are and that there's a password prompt. So if you've remembered just the single long password for the main program, that's all you need to remember. Um, I find that I'm putting in uh, passports, for instance, images, uh, uh, children and spouses and so on, and um, it's locked in there, it's encrypted, but uh, it means that if there's a visa to be attached to it, um, you can put in the, the copy document as well. Uh, so it's, it goes beyond just simple passwords. Um, an alternative is LastPass, it's by LogMeIn, uh, they were the people who also do the remote uh, access. So that comes with a heavy credential as well of experience. One thing I like about 1Password, it has a family sharing subscription model as well. So if I buy the Bells and Whistles version, then up to five members of the same family can share their own, sorry, can share the program, but with discrete vaults. So my daughter's passwords are locked in, I can't get at them, but she knows where they are, I'm paying for the sub. Just a useful um, bit of thinking on their part. I think. So uh, protect the passwords. If you haven't been doing it, please do. Final slide then for me, and I know Justin has one or two pieces. Um, marketing, look, we're, we're in recovery, um, in recovery and about to fall off a cliff of a recession. Um, it's, you know, all the hints are, all the signs are there. So marketing is never more important, I think. And um, LinkedIn is 675 million business and professional people. Um, and while we're working within Ireland, there's a lot of people checking our LinkedIn profiles and so on. And there's every reason why you might want to expand your horizons. I had to redo my LinkedIn profile and I was fortunate enough, coincidentally, um, uh, just before lockdown to become aware of a business network uh, group, an international group, and they provide LinkedIn profile training for free. So it's about 40 minutes with um, a British uh, lady who has 20 years experience, really super stuff. Uh, I'm happy to offer it to any of you free uh, because they said I can. Um, a free SEO check as well on your website. So how good is your website? So part of the reason I'm looking at doing mine again because I ran that check and <laughs> say I was disappointed. Um, you know, we, we're not web designers. We don't keep up. Uh, six years is simply too old. So my website is not functioning. It's a brochure. But look, we really need more than a brochure. You need a sales funnel. You need it to be working for us. And the only way to do that is to hit the Google algorithms to be found. Over 91% of websites on Google are never found. So how effective is the website? That SEO check, again, happy to offer it to any of you for free. It's a produced 11 or 12 page PDF. You can give that to your own web people. There's no trap here. I'm simply offering it as a tool um, or I can talk you through what else uh, you can do. So that's what it is. I'm happy that you would also offer those to your clients. Um, and again, in COVID recovery phase, why not put yourself out there as a trusted person who has something of value to add without expecting something back? I'm happy you give them the, the LinkedIn training option. You give them the SEO check. Um, and if they discover something that help their business, they have you to thank. Can't be bad. So if interested, email me, contact me, or if I can help with anything else, do the same. Justin, that was as quick as I could reasonably do uh, yeah, for questions or otherwise. Yeah, I hope I didn't put you under too much pressure. There's a couple of questions there. Dragon, dictate, yes or no, work it from home, PC or laptop. Um, any views on that? Yeah, Dragon has been a very strong program. Uh, again, it's part of Nuance, which that Power PDF was. Um, uh, and again, you know, Apple's own OS, Microsoft's OS, they all have uh, um, dictation software inbuilt now. I used Dragon for a while. I just found 
the learning curve was still a bit strong and uh, whether it's just me, um, uh, I know I can edit faster and more accurately. I'm lucky I can speak and dictate a letter with punctuation without thinking twice. Um, I, I personally haven't, haven't worked it. I know some other people haven't found it good, but uh, I think if I'm dictating into that app and paying for my outsourced typing at two euro per minute of dictated phrasing, why sweat the other? So there was, a, there was another question there from uh, Susan regarding um, sending docs via Mac doc, via Mac. Do you have a Microsoft on Mac or do you export to Word and then send it as a? Yeah, the, the, the frustrating. Mi Microsoft have um, versions for the Mac and I uh, have downloaded them as part of my Office 365 subscription. It works fine. Um, but again, don't lose sight of the fact that if I'm working from home, I tend to work remotely to my Office PC. So my Mac is only the device which links to my Office PC. So I'm using the Office software, the Office machinery, the Office servers uh, to do all my creation. It's just I'm controlling it from home. Okay, very good. Uh, so does, if anybody else out there has a, has a question, uh, just in the last sort of a minute or two of this, that would be great. Uh, Neil, if you could just roll it on one more, I just want to talk about next week's session. Of course. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so next week's section is employment challenges uh, post COVID-19. So if anyone has any questions they want to ask prior to that, if they want to send them to me, uh, it's on the next slide. The registration details will be there also, which will send out the, the, the slides later. Um, I think, Neil, it's been really interesting. I think uh, the challenge is to pull all of these things together and did it take you a long time or, well, you know, is it, was it, was it hard to do? No, not too hard. And the nice thing about this is that um, uh, almost none of what I've, I've shared with you needs to go onto a server or needs my IT guys to come in and do it. Um, it's all quite intuitive uh, and very reasonably costed. You know, I mean, a new screen for a second screen is about 80 euro. The little um, sharing socket is about 30. So even if you make a mess of it, it's, it's not the end of the world, you know. Um, and none of the software I've spoken of, if you're putting it on the iPad, uh, you're not plugging that into your, your office server directly. You may be sharing the Wi-Fi, but if it's your iPad and you have it properly secured, I think the, the risk is, is minimized, you know? I suppose, and the last question then, is if you're stuck on a desert island with only one of these tools, what would you take? <laughs> well, the iPad is the portable one. Mind you, no bloody Wi-Fi in the desert island. So, uh, yeah, probably have to go back to my book. <laughs> Very good. Uh, Listen, Neil, thank you very much for, for the session. I think it's been really comprehensive. There's some really, really cool, innovative, brilliant tools, even for myself. Uh, I thought the to-do list with Pomodoro and all of that sort of stuff is, is really interesting. Yeah. Where, where there's well, a, a multiple of activities that you're trying to, trying to manage. Uh, sure. Well, as I say, so I'm, I'm happy. It's, it's all a little overwhelming. So I suppose back to first basics and pick one or two off if you can and, uh, and then just build a bit well, of it is, but you've got 25 minutes of multiples there so yeah. uh, you know um, reach out to me if I can help you know yeah. I'm here yeah. uh, I think people should that. look at one or two areas where they could improve yeah. one at a time it's like you know the uh, sorting stuff out start one shelf at a time and, uh, and then eventually the cupboard will, will, will be cleaned up so yeah. listen thanks very much Neil again it's been a really great session uh, okay. we look forward to seeing you all next week where Anne O'Connell from Anne O'Connell Sisters will be joining us about post to COVID uh, employment challenges. Uh, I look forward to talking to you again soon, Neil. Thank you very all right. much. Thanks all. God bless. Have a nice day. Well.